Hi everybody! In today's video, I'm going to be butchering a whole bunch of pronunciations, and I'm also going to be giving my first impressions about the new Raylene cargo hauler. Now, get ready for this one. It's being offered by Gaddock, which is a brand new addition to the ever-growing list of in-game ship manufacturers. The Raylene is their entry into the UEE ship market, both in terms of being in lore and from the perspective of the Star Citizen community. House Gatak is a purely Xi'an-run corporation that has started extending its influence into building ships that are equally suited for both Xi'an and human crew. And this has some interesting ramifications to it that I'll go into more detail about later on in this video. So let's talk about what this ship has to offer when it comes to being a cargo hauler. For starters, it carries an impressive 320 SCUs of cargo, all of which are held in a series of triangle-shaped containers that it stacks in an interlocking pattern along the outside of the ship. These pods are built out of a high-grade alloy that's supposed to have the same equivalent level of protection as it would get from hull plating, and is further held safely within the protective covering of its two large shield generators. It has a maximum crew size of four, and in the true style of a Xi'an craft, it has multiple configuration modes, one of which is for flying, and has another for when it's landing. While in flight, its dimensions are 53 meters long, 52 meters wide, and has a height of 67 meters. When it's landed, its dimensions alter to being 65 meters long, 52 meters wide, and has a height of 37 meters. For weapons, it has two turrets. Each one is located on the flanks of the ship and is outfitted with two size 4 weapons. In addition to the guns, the Raylene has two bespoke missile launchers that carries eight size 1 missiles each for a total of 16 size 1 missiles. It also has another pair of bespoke missile launchers that holds two size 2 missiles per rack for a total of four size 2s. Traditionally, when they make it a point to call something bespoke, it means that it's not configurable or that it's hull locked, so you most likely won't be able to swap out its missile racks for something else. We can always swap out what kinds of missiles it's carrying for any other type of missile, as long as it's the same size. This ship mostly has a combination of medium and large size components. When it comes to its life support system, quantum drive, jump drive, computer, radar, and scanner, it all has a single medium size component for each. Well, it has a single large power plant and two large shield generators and two large coolers. It also has a single size 2 tractor beam, which I'm going to guess is used to detach and connect the cargo boxes from the main body of the ship. And this seems to be a standard feature that they're starting to incorporate into a lot of their new ship designs. The internal structure is one of the most interesting aspects of this craft, being truly alien looking in every way. And I love how it's a complete deviation from the bio-organic look of the Vanduul ships. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the Vanduul aesthetic. But I also like having some variation when it comes to how the other alien ships look. We've only gotten a few glimpses of the interior of a Xi'an vessel, and from what's been shown, it's completely unique looking to anything that we've seen up until now. The Rayleigh naturally blends the use of grav tech throughout its structure. It has an anti-gravity lift to carry people into the ship and as a way to travel between decks. And from this picture, it seems to semi-hover in place rather than fully rest on the ground like other ships traditionally do and even the chairs in the flight deck and the rec room seem to float in place. I wouldn't be surprised if they had an anti-gravity bed that allows you to hover above the mattress in any position you wanted. Although I'm not really too keen on having an experience with an anti-grav toilet. The concept for this ship was first introduced in the Ship Talk segment which aired as part of the 2949 Citizen Con presentation, and most of what they said about the ship still holds true. It roughly carries the same amount of cargo, it's being constructed by an alien manufacturer, and it's going to be a good competitor for the other mid-range haulers. I do have several surface observations about this ship and a few concerns as well that I want to share with you. The first of which that I've noticed is that the other Xi'an ships seem to all excel when it comes to maneuverability. It's one of their primary attributes. The Kartual and the Santo Kiai both have a unique engine configuration that consists of dual vector thrusters. They also seem to have the best handling out of any of the ships that are currently flyable and the railing appears to have a very similar looking thruster setup. Its engines don't seem to be on the same level as the ones you'd find on the scouts or medium sized fighters, but it does have several points of articulation to it. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to be doing any racing using this ship, but when compared with other similarly sized cargo haulers, this could end up being one of the best options you could use for transporting goods to and from within an atmosphere. And having a higher level of maneuverability is going to become increasingly more important as a ship's cargo starts to weigh it down and affect its handling. One very interesting fact about the Raylene is that in the ship's brochure, they made it a point to state that it was designed for both humans and Xi'an. It has certain accommodations that are specifically aimed at the Xi'an, like the scratching wall for the habitation room, as well as the fermentation vessels and the nutrition amphora that you'll find in the galley. 
On one hand, you could look at this as just being a marketing ploy. You could also say that they're future-proofing this ship so that you're not surprised one day when you end up seeing a Raylene being crewed by a group of Xi'an NPCs. Or you could also infer that once NPCs are introduced into the game that people who own this ship could potentially be able to hire humans and Xi'an NPCs to operate it, which could generate some unique benefits to having an alien crew, or create some interesting interactions if you had a mix of both Xi'an and humans on board. One of the only concerns that I have for this ship is with the turrets. Generally placing turrets on the flanks of a ship tends to make them almost useless. Most predatory ships have a forward-facing orientation to their weapons, and prey ships tend to have a lot of rear-facing weaponry. The way the railing ship has its gun set up, it could potentially be able to aim and converge its shots in front of, behind, on top of, and below the ship with equal levels of precision. The turret seems to extend out far enough from the body of the ship to make this possible. But of course I could be wrong, and if I am, then the twin size 4 guns that it has aren't going to really matter much. So would this ship be a worthwhile purchase? It would for people who are looking for a cargo hauler that hits that sweet spot when it comes to being able to carry enough cargo to make it worthwhile to use while not being too time consuming to unload. It's also going to end up being a great ship to use for transporting goods planet side to a ship that's orbiting in space. Like for instance taking the saddlebags from a series of prospectors or moles up to an orbiting hull C. The 320 SCU's capacity puts it on par with other ships like the Starfare, the Genesis Starliner, and the Hull B. The only thing that this ship doesn't have that the other haulers do is that a lot of the other vessels that can carry this much cargo tend to have a large open space within them that you could also use to transport vehicles or other small ships with. And because of the way that the railing stores its cargo, it doesn't allow for it to be used this way. It's the only thing that I really wish this ship had that it doesn't. Well that's going to be it for what my first impressions are about the railing cargo hauler. Thanks for watching, and take care.